What it is, y'all? It is your old boy Pilk, and I'm coming back at you today with more Daimachi. Now, today we are going to talk about the Jade Bonds, the ones that you can get out of the shop in the game. Which bonds are really the absolute best bang for the buck? But we're also going to talk about basically all the units in the uh, in the anniversary, regardless of whether or not they have bonds in the Jade system. But uh, if you're not familiar with the Jade bonds, if you go to the shop, you go to the 30 anniversary coins for 3,000 of those coins, you can get a free bond one time and one time only uh, for one of these units. Now, obviously, and let's just kick it off with the most obvious choice, Finn. The Finn Assist, not the Adventure. The Adventure is pretty good. I mean, I put him in A-class. But the assist is absolutely necessary. And I will kick this off by saying, if you did not max limit break the fin assist, get his bond. If you have star bonds, put star bonds into him. This is a unit you're going to use almost every single build. Uh, probably for the next two years, maybe even more. Um, real talk, he basically replaced Casino Seer. Though if you are just building a crazy SA team like you've seen me do a few times. Uh, you can still use the two of them together, but Casino Seer was an early game. Uh, I think she was first anniversary, I believe. I don't re recollect specifically, but I think by the time North America got the game, or at least by the time I started playing the game shortly after uh, North America's version dropped, um, she's kind of always been there. So now that she's got this other unit that kind of usurps her in a way, Yes and no, they, they can work together, but I digress. That fin assist is absolutely mandatory, 100%. Now, if you're not familiar, familiar with what he does, he gives every single unit in the game 33% SA gauge charge. Just like if you have ever seen my builds with, uh, with Lene, he literally does that on the assist side. And remember, assists basically stack on the back of adventures so if you have lean a and finn on a team that's 66 percent sagh charge per unit we even have some units that do 100 percent sagh charge case in point the reveria there in a class but uh i really feel like finn i mean i if, if you don't have maximum broken at the end of this event you're gonna be very 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 sorry i really feel like he's that damn good okay that's why he's in a class all by himself but I'm going to be honest, I also have another tier up there called Must Must Limit Break. And that includes Astrea, uh, Osfi, and the Seer Assists. I feel like those four assists should absolutely be max limit broken before the event ends. And I know this event is ending on Wednesday, so that's why I wanted to get this video out over the weekend so you have time to start preparing. But honestly, if you have to choose between those four... Finn 100%. Finn is going to work on every single team. Period. End of discussion. Now, why do I say these units? Let me go grab the uh, the old trusty album here. Um, so, Estrella, if you're not familiar with what she does, I'll go ahead and just read her stuff out here. First of all, her agility is off the chain. Even if she's plus three, she still has a double S agility stat. Remember, that goes on to whoever she's attached to. So, she could really make or break a rush team. Um, not only that, she does... 30% HP regen per turn at max limit break. That'd be 20% uh, anywhere lower than that. Physical attack and magic attack null one time, excluding special arts. So basically, for the first physical attack you receive, the first magic attack you receive, that's gone. On top of the HP regen, she is so necessary. She will work on so many teams. She's awesome for war game, really just made for war game, but still will work in like 7th zone, even on your normal event grind. Uh, I believe she's even going to have a place in our EX2 team. I haven't perfected it yet. Uh, I'm trying to get it less than 69 turns. Uh, but if you were there for that stream, it was hilarious. Um, <laughs> I know it frustrated some people, but I thought it was hilarious. Uh, so I really feel like she's absolutely awesome. That's why I put her first in line. Asfi is another really awesome one. Thankfully, I was able to maximum break her and actually get a couple of extra bonds on top. Just from most of my draws. Uh, Osfi, when she's maximum broken, she has a deck stat that is double S. Uh, double S deck stat is only a maximum break, though, so while she's good, she probably, like, falls behind ever so slightly in Australia. but that's going to be really good for units that 
you know, you want to do critical damage units, that, especially units that you want to counter. She's going to be awesome for units that you want to counter. So start attaching her to like your Ardies and your uh, uh, Harahimes and units that you really want those counter heals from. That's going to help with her. Now, what does she do? Foes. Damage received attack all... I'm sorry. Attack single target. So foes, plural. Damage received attack single target plus 20%. Allies dex plus 15. Now... That is going to be 15% anywhere level 60 and up. Level 80, fully max limit broken, she's going to be 20% damage received. And this is why I say she's so damn good. Uh, if you don't have her max limit broken, you are going to be okay. But she'll ju just kind of be a sack unit. You really, really, really... And the fact that it's like a foes pl plural debuff, it does allies dex buff, which is going to be really good for those units that you have in the front line for countering once again. Um... But what this is going to do in a Record Buster or Familia Rush or Familia Royale or a Single Target 7th Zone, it's really going to cripple you, the, your units and make them take so, or cripple your opponent's units and make them take so much more damage. Not so much in uh, War Game, kind of useless in War Game, but in Record Buster, busted all to hell. So, so, so good. And that's once again why I think she's unit you absolutely need to max limit break. Okay? So, if you've got the two of them max limit broken, then I would go ahead and say Seer probably would be your next choice. Now, let me pull up Seer stats here just so I make sure I quote all these absolutely correctly. Seer's another one that's got a really good uh, double S agility stat. It's 589. Unfortunately, she's not quite as good as Astraea, but she's another really, really, really good agility unit that will help your units get damage out very quickly. Foes plural, at max limit break, foes plural, physical and magic resist down 15%. Uh, that'll be 10% lower than that, so it, she's a good unit, but not the end of the world, but she also does nullification of three ailments, and that's really important. If you've come up against like crazy ailment teams in Wargame, you know, that, that, like, ailment teams can cripple you, but quick. So, she will take the wind out of their sails to an extent. To an extent. Um, not the end of the world, but definitely helpful. Very helpful. Um, but that uh, strength of magic down 15% is going to be really, really, really critical. I believe she's one of only a handful of units that do that much debuffing. So she's really good. So my answer to anybody who's like, what star bonds do I want to do? What, what all this stuff do I want to do? I believe these four are absolutely necessary to maximum break. And the reason I start off with these assists is because I always say that assists kind of are your best bang for the buck. Every 5% on an assist is like 15% on an adventure, yeah, give or take. But that's a give or take about what you would kind of equate it to. So these assists are really, really, really important. Now, you will notice that the Freya assist is in A tier. <laughs> Pardon me. I really, really like the Freya assist, but I gotta be real. Her usefulness is a little antiquated. She's got another crazy deck stat. Allies counter rate plus 20%. That's very good. Foes, critical rate, penetration, and guard rate down 10%. Now, this is good for war game. But I'm going to be real, it's more of like a unit you'd bring in late game. And with the way Wargame has been lately with like the rushes and all that stuff, I really feel like if you're going to put four units in the front of Wargame, you're probably going to do, with the exception of Osprey up there, you're going to do that. Now, you could fit, fit Freya into that lineup, but I feel like there's other units that are slightly better than her to go in that lineup. So that's why I put her in S-Class. I think I said A before. She's more like an S-Class. Still extremely good. I mean, as far as assists go, she is absolutely top tier, but I don't know if she's worth, in comparison to these four, worth your star bonds. And I know that's a lot of star bonds we're talking about. I'm well aware. And that's why I kind of lined it up this way. Like, if you have to choose between the four, Finn 100%. Finn should get every star bond before anybody else because you're going to use him in everything. Like, that Finn is so important going forward. I, I cannot harp on that hard enough. Uh, Astraea's absolutely excellent for war game and a few other uh sets um Osfi really kind of is the best use for record buster but if you have her on your record buster team max limit broken you are gonna do crazy 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 damage so 
Remember, Record Buster is how you get a lot of free-to-play Iris in this game. So that's the number one reason I put her to must MLB. Normally, I wouldn't do that because she is specific to that, you know, that and any kind of single target experience. But in reality, she is going to bring those teams to absolute life. And she's like the best unit we have for those things. So she, good, she got a good place there in the must MLB category. See, you're, on the other hand, just absolutely great all over the place. So that's kind of why, while I do have Freya down in the third rack, the third rack is still our S-tiered rack. These units are absolutely no joke. These units pretty much outrank everything else we've gotten in the game up to this point and are absolutely necessary. But we've had to make very, very, very hard calls on these, and that's why there's two ranks above S-clear. Uh, sorry, I'm sorry, above S-rank. <laughs> So, Allen. Allen's assist is another S-ranked assist. And I know this is probably going to be very a un very unpopular opinion. Uh, don't get me wrong, once again, probably one of the best assists we have in the game. But, if I'm real, I feel like those four above him are just a little bit better. Just a little bit better. So, what does he do? He's got another crazy uh, agility stat. We got a lot of decks and agility out of this event, out of the 30th anniversary. Foes, agility down 15%, self-critical rate and penetration rate 20%. So here's the here's the deal with this. If you're using Allen on the front lines of your wargame team, that's kind of the unit you would put there instead of Freya. So you'd have Finn, you would have... Eh, Finn's even maybe iffy on the teams lately. Um, if you get to turn 4 with Finn, you are getting off a first SA, and that's going to be really nice. Um, so, like, Finn, Estrella, then Allen, and then Seer, if, you know, obviously depending upon the units they're tied to, uh, you'd want to take their stats and time to the best units for those stats. But that those four are going to be a killer wargame lineup. If you manage to get to turn four, Finn's going to ensure that you get an SA off before anybody else and ruin it. Um, and basically, that agility debuff. Now, it's not like a slow. It is, it's the effect of a slow, but it isn't negated by any kind of um, ailment resistance. So they can't really block that, that agility down. They can't block that slow. That is super handy. So using him on the front line of a war game team is really, really useful. The, let me just say, though, most other systems in the game, you're not going to use him. So while I say he's S clear or S, oh, S clear, S tier, he is only S tier and only so good for war game. Beyond that, he doesn't have a lot of uses. Plus, if I want to take the wind out of his sails a little more, critical rate and penetration rate plus twenty percent is great, but only for the unit he's tied to. So you're really putting him on someone like Ryu or uh, uh, almost said Estrella. Ryu or Althea, someone that you really want to, like, rush with crazy, insane damage. And then it's only buffing that unit. It's not buffing the entire team. So that really takes the wind out of his sails a little bit. And that's why I almost put him in A tier because of that. Almost. But after seeing what his agility does and how great he'd be in Wargame, I couldn't justify putting him any less than S tier. You know, it's just nature of the beast. Okay, now those are our assists, and I want to talk about assists first, because assists are so damn important. If you have to choose between assists and adventures, always go with assists. They're A, number one, the biggest bang for the buck. And notice that we do not have an assist that is lower than S tier. That should tell you how good the assists are in this Avast. Please go away. I didn't, real didn't realize that was showing up on, this, on the video. Um, that should tell you how good the assists are right now that we've gotten in 30th anniversary. Now, you can kind of like pretty much negate those first two lines because with the adventures, everything else that we're going to do is going to be in the S clear and lower uh, or S tier. I keep saying S clear, S tier and lower only because um, I, I most of these units, like even in the S class, you don't necessarily need a mech's limit broken. Now, I'm going to start off with Artie. And when Artie first came to the game, I devalued her a little bit. Because while 
I did see a lot of value in her unit. Like, she's got all of her stats are double S when you put a little CP into her. Um, so she's extremely, extremely, extremely good. Main thing she does, and the main thing she does, is her first skill is a death saving throw. Allies fast, avoids KO one time when HP is 10% or less. Removed, obviously, when it goes below that. Physical resist and magic resist plus 30% and 35 HP regen for 30 or for four turns, 30 turns, good grief. Where's my brain tonight? So, really good sack unit. Really good sack unit with that first skill. Or, her second skill makes her an extremely good ally to have on your team. Allies 30% HP heal, foes physical resist and magic resist down 30%. So, she gets that big defensive buff on skill one. Skill two, she gets that big... Uh, uh, basically defensive debuff to your foes critical rate and penetration rate down 40 percent. then you get an offensive debuff she is extremely extremely good now here's kind of the discussion i have here she does fit on a lot of teams if you guys watch the team where we uh cleared the dragon um basically she had a great spot on that team it her with haruhime will keep your team absolutely ironically alive um she is a really good support maybe one of the best supports we've had in this game and i feel like a like when she first came we saw all that but kind of didn't see her the long-term effects of what she's going to do she will help your team once again ironically absolutely survive hell and back when we do ex2 hopefully tomorrow i believe uh finally beating that with some low tier units She's going to be critical to that. She's really, really, really good. But for her skills, she doesn't need to be a max limit broken. She can be a sack unit that you kind of throw on there and just do whatever with. So, already extremely good, but I don't think she's a must MLB. If you don't have her max limit broken, you can use her as a sack. But if you have her max limit broken, she's really, really, really good for the team. Um, I would say, if at all possible, max limit break her. Only because I think you're going to find, and we were having this discussion last night, we were, and big shout out to uh, our Discord, uh, some of the folks came out and helped us actually perfect this tier list, and so this is something that we vetted for a minute, so uh, if you have any disagreements or if you have any comments, definitely put it in the description down below, it helps the community. And, you know, just obviously keep it positive. But if you disagree, absolutely, it is worth the discussion. This is an opinion piece. But I digress. Um, she is really, really, really good. If you have her maximum broken, I think that's a great choice. Because I feel like we're going to be getting some of those EX bosses more often. If you remember the EX system we got, I believe it was just before the anniversary. I think that's coming as a regular event. And she's going to be absolutely critical to helping people that don't have Maxima Broken teams survive those events. Anyway, I've harped on her enough. Let's talk about Ryu. And the main reason Ryu is up here is because Ryu and... She's really good, don't get me wrong. She's a freaking amazing hitter. Um, she is clutch in war games. She's absolutely stellar. The number one reason she ups up here is the only reason that she's... I mean, she would almost go above S tier, but I really feel like there's other units that you probably rather put your bonds in. But we got so many free bond opportunities with her. We got a free bond. We basically, we got her for free just for logging into the game. We got... Uh, free, uh, I believe we, got, we didn't get a free bond when we finished the event. We got a free bond through Heroic Trials. Um, she came through pretty much on the uh, banner as well. So, and, and now you've got the Jade Light. So you're going to have every opportunity to max. I'm going to break this unit. Hopefully, the emphasis on hopefully, I'm sure that there's somebody watching this that got absolutely borked on her banner, but... Uh, hopefully you had every opportunity to max limit break her before this event, and I think she's going to be really good for a really long time. The win team got a lot of love in this event, so, and a lot of love they frankly needed in my opinion. So, if you don't have her already max limit broken, she's like plus four or whatever, great opportunity to use the Jade Light, and I think it's going to be the most bang for your buck, because if she's plus four, I'm gonna guess most of your other units are probably like plus two plus three so if you have to choose maximum breaking a unit 
is going to be more effective. And that's why she's here. She's, you've had every opportunity to max limit breaker. And so that is 100% the decision you should probably make. And again, I'm basing that off of how many free bonds we had the opportunity to get for her. She's most likely to be closest on most free-to-play teams. So she's a great candidate for the, for the hero lights. I'm sorry, the jade lights. Good grief. I can't think today. All right. Lyra. Lyra's an interesting choice. So let's talk about what Lyra does. First of all, her endurance, her agility, and her magic are double S stats. Her magic goes up to triple S when she is uh, ascended. And she has a great spot on, like, so many teams. Skill 1 is a foes, plural, fast, fast. Magic resist minus 35%. Agility down 30%. It's a big agility debuff to throw in your wargame team. Very good option. And she does, on that same turn, self plus two actions, low earth magic attack. So every turn after that, for two turns, she's going to be doing a low earth magic attack, along with the other attack she's doing, which, skill two is a foes, plural, mid earth magic attack with temporary magic boost, ultra and counter rate, self, magic 50%, foes, earth resist down 40%. Now, the fact that she doesn't have a super attack and even a high class AoE attack kind of starts to take the wind out of her sails a little bit but the agility debuff is off the chain and the fact that she has one of the highest aoe type debuffs in the game without having to do an sa a 40 percent aoe earth debuff is absolutely stellar what an awesome unit so if you need to maximum break a unit for your earth team She's a great choice. Absolutely great choice. I'm also going to talk about Otarl. Now, Otarl is the first single target unit that we have had in this matchup. And the reason he's at the end is because I've been really... I was really, really, really tempted to not put him in S tier. I was going to put him in A tier because he is single target because he's so conditional. But if you consider what he does... So, his third skill is a fast... High Earth Physical Attack with Physical Resist and Earth Resist down 35%. Guard Rate down 50%. Any type of single target uh, situation, I guess, for lack of a better word. Otarl is going to be absolutely mandatory. So, I'm sorry, that was skill 2. I take that back. That was skill 2. He is going to take the wind out of their sails completely. But here's the best part. Skill 3 is a faux singular super earth physical attack with temporary strength boost, high critical rate, strength and magic down 45% for two turns. He, on any single target event, he replaces Haruhime's debuff completely, makes her irrelevant. You would sack this unit and you would bring in, like, basically have Haruhime on the front end, have her do Yosuga, sack him turn one, have him do that big debuff, and then walk away. And if nothing else, nothing else, that's what he's good for. But with everything he does, with as beastly as his debuffs are, with as absolutely hard as he hits, like if you've seen, we've had him hit north of like 3 million in, right, in the right situation. One of the hardest hitting single target units in the game. If you maxima break him, I think he's going to do great. He's like uh, New Year's Anya... Uh, Katori from the uh, Data Life crossover. Those types of single target units that are used in like every single single, tar single target event basically going forward. Like he will have good places on there even if he is type deficient. They would have to set up. Basically the only thing he's not going to be super good at is 7th zone. And even then with as much as he debuffs there with some of the new units we got there might be a way around that. So what an absolutely stellar unit. If you have him plus three, plus four, a good candidate for your Jade Lights. But once again, I would say everybody else in S tier or up, really a much better choice. And let me explain why I did uh, assists first, too, before I get too far into this. Because remember, if you're going to be buying uh, the Star Bonds, assists are the bigger bang for the buck. If you're buying a Star Bond... Uh, from the shop through gnome tickets, it's 1,500 gnome tickets for an assist, 1,000 for an adventure. So assists really just give you the better economy, for lack of a better way to put it, uh, than adventures. But if you manage to maximum break all those units 
then, or you just really need a maximum break in adventure for whatever reason, then you probably want to pay close, pay really close attention to S tier. But that's S tier. We've also got A tier, and there's some stellar, stellar units in A tier. And let's kick it off by talking about Elise. Now, I think Elise absolutely needs no introduction. She was basically the war game king for the last couple of war game queen. Her. I mean, I guess it depends on how she identifies. We never really asked. She is absolutely the war game killer for the last couple of war games. She's only recently kind of been usurped by uh, Ryu and Anafi and people like that. Um, but if she still gets her SA off in war games, she will absolutely crush an opponent. She hits super hard. Most of the time, mine hits between 15 and 16,000 in war game. That is probably one and a half times most people's health in war game maybe even more so she is a killer the only thing that would really take her apart would be a good arty build and that's it um let's get another reason arty is s tier and she's a tier now skill one for her is a foes plural fast high physical attack with ultra and counter rate self strength and fire attack damage 60 percent Foes, fire resist down 40%. And it's also worth noting her SA does the same thing, but for all allies. All allies get strength, magic, and fire damage 60%. You throw her on a really older, kind of antiquated fire team, and she brings them to life. We did the test where uh, Krazo from last year was brought up to hitting almost a million AoE. Like, the dude is a nut job now with the addition of... Elise. Elise is extremely, extremely good. Um, skill 2 is a foe's super fire. Physical attack with temporary strength boost and ultra critical rate. Allies critical rate and penetration rate plus 30%. So she gets a super class AoE attack and, and a big buff. Remember, like I said, if we do double essays with her and Krazo, the results are absolutely disgusting. And it absolutely brings last year's Krazo back into prominence on the fire team. Um, she is so crazy. Like, the fire team never, ever, ever gets old. It's so nuts. So she's still very good. But once again, A tier only because I think every unit above her really deserves the bond over her. And... You're really kind of relying on her SA, you're relying on her buffs and debuffs. So if you don't have her max limit broken, it's not the end of the world. A plus three or even plus four unit is extremely survivable, will still be very, very good for most events. So that's the only reason. And notice like how the tiering is. This is how good these units are. Like B tier is that, that tier where we're kind of like going, eh, 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 eh. But B tier will still dominate units from, like, most of the, in fact, most of the units from, like, six months ago in the game. Just absolutely dominate. That's why this tiering is so difficult and so, took so long to get off. But let's go ahead and talk about the Finn Adventurer that we just got. Uh, because I still feel like he's extremely good, but I do feel like he is an A class and not really above. He does have a triple S strength stat, so he is a very hard hitter. HP is 3775, still very good, and that's of course a maximum break, max ascend. Um, skill one is a fast, low fire, I'm sorry, low wind physical attack with ultra critical rate, wind resist down 40%. So once again, notice that kind of AoE 40% debuff on the type. We talked about that with uh, Lyra, how absolutely amazing that is. The Finn almost is like an S-tiered unit. He really is really, really, really close. Wind resist down 40%. Ally strength and agility up 30%. Um, that agility buff is extremely good, but I'm going to be real. If you have to make the choice in Wargame, I feel like... It's a little bit better to debuff rather than buff, though there is something to be said for both. Uh, Legion Slayer. Foes plural. This is skill two. Foes plural. Super wind physical attack with ultra uncounter rate. Earth resist. I'm sorry. Physical resist and magic resist and fire resist water. Thunder, earth, light, dark, resist. All those go down three turns. That is not a percentage debuff. That is a turn debuff. Now... Here's kind of why he goes in A tier instead of S tier. B 
because instead of having a percentage debuff on all of those things and having units hit harder, basically what he does is he takes the buffs away from the other units. But this does require that he may not be on the team. This kind of does. And, and there's some argument as to whether that's going to be good or not in 7th zone. It's something we'd have to test out. But I really feel like that second skill falls off the map a little bit in comparison to what Lyra does. So if I directly compare Finn to Lyra, Lyra has a lot more useful effects. Finn kind of has skill 1, and then skill 2 is it's a good hit. It's a hard hit, but the effects aren't just all that great, if I'm honest. Um, but, once again, he's still in A tier. He will ruin, ruin the lives of anybody that came out prior to this event with maybe, maybe the exception of the uh, Thunder units, the um, Arguin Fina that we got, maybe, with rare exception. Um, so, still a very good unit. I don't want to discount that. But in comparison to the units above him, I feel like that skill 2 kind of does him dirty. Kaguya. Uh, Gojira, my girl. Um, old Stomp Stomp Fire Breath here. Let's see what she's got going on. Uh, she is an A tier. And I think she's, once again, extremely good. But if I had to choose a bond for her... Uh, let's see. Skill 1 is a... Foes plural, uh, high fire physical attack with temporary strength boost, ultra uncounter rate, and self actions plus two turns. So she doesn't really have a very good effect on skill one. Skill two is a fast low fire physical attack with ultra on guard rate, strength and dex damage plus 60%. Foes physical resist down 35%. We already have enough units to do foes down 35%. Uh, it's a good debuff, even though it, it, as an AoE, but notice she doesn't give herself any fire damage. She really kind of falls off the map. Now, if you can get the SA off with Elise, she'll absolutely kill and wreck and destroy. And she's very, very, very good. She's still a very viable hitter. In fact, uh, her, unfortunately, her skill 3, and I wish her skill 3, the foe singular attack, I wish that had a percentage boost. If that had a percentage boost, I really think that would boost her into S-Class because then she'd be like very viable across the board. But unfortunately, she just kind of falls off the map a little bit. Uh, it is worth noting that she does do a physical resist down 60% as her SA. I think that's the highest in the game. So there is something to be said about using her with Elise. But she really, really, really needs Elise. And almost needs Elise's SA to really be useful. So she was borderline on a B. In fact, she might be my only B and I'd put my two Bs down into a C class. But... For as hard as she hits, I couldn't justify it. Um, but she needs a lease. She's got to have a lease. So you've got a hard decision to make there. Um, if you have a lease maximum broken and you're working on your fire team, she's not a bad choice. But I'm going to be real. I think the wind team is slightly better. I, the earth team is way better. Um, tough calls, guys. Okay. Earth team, the AoE earth team is way better. The single target earth team is absolutely absolutely astonishing but you know like i said there are decisions to be made here so yeah decisions decisions uh shock t shock t is kind of fun and interesting uh, i do not have my max limit broken and i feel like she's probably one of the very few units i do not have maximum broken on this list so i feel like either her probably her honestly will get my uh, Jade Light. I really feel like that's be my choice because everybody above that on my team is completely maximum broken. Like they're done. They they got everything. They're good to go. So I feel like I'm probably gonna put my personal Jade Light into her. Now every everything but Endurance is a double S. Uh, she will be on the verge of a triple S stat and a double S Endurance stat. Or sorry, triple S Magic stat and double S Endurance stat when she gets a little bit of CP. So her first uh, first skill is an Allies. Fast, physical resist, 40%, damage received, attack all uh, targets, minus 20% for 5 turns, self 3 turns, 30% HP, heal for all allies. What an amazing war game unit. What an amazing 7th zone unit. What an amazing long term, uh, I guess for lack of a better term, a long term... Um, defensive unit she's really 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 good using her alongside of Artie is going to be absolutely disgusting um if stall teams were still a very viable thing in wargame 
she would be the queen of the stall teams. The stall teams have kind of fallen off. And she does kind of, I I feel like Artie does outlive her in a lot of later events. Her second skill is a super wind magic attack with temporary magic boost, ultra encounter rate, foes, strength minus 40%, allies heal 20% for three turns. So bear in mind, she has like a double heal. So that three turn, the three extra action, 30% heal, and the 20% heal is a 50% heal for basically three turns because you're going to kind of spam the AoE attack, except when you have to rebuff that extra action. And do you remember that doesn't include her essays? She has to actually do an attack on those turns in order to get those extra heals. So she's just like the best healer in the game without question. Um, just a very, very, very good unit all around. That said, she does kind of fall apart in the damage category. But to be fair, she does damage and heal. So once again, where a unit like this, if she didn't have the attack, would easily be a B-class unit that how good her healing is and the fact that she does damage with her heals really solidifies her a-class just a hundred percent uh but i do feel like sh her and Artie are like gonna be best friends or well sisters ah! <laughs> but i'm tiss um so just really 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 good units um but once again i kind of feel like in fact i would almost put her in front of kaguya i really feel like um there may even be an argument for putting her in front of Elise the more I think about it, but that's a tough call. You've got to probably have other units in mind. But the win, the win team is absolutely just killer. Let's talk about Riv. The new Riv is absolutely stellar, but once again, extremely, and I mean extremely conditional. And we actually sat down last night and tried to determine, because there there is an opportunity for Fire Riv to actually perhaps out damage her but i feel like if they're both completely maxed if the enemy is debuffed exactly the same way i think you're going to get about the same amount out of both of them the only difference between her and the fire rib is that she does sa gauge charge 100 percent so skill one is a self fast increase sa gauge charge 100 percent and water damage 100 percent for four turns self three actions low water magic attack then she goes and does skill three because she's a one three two Foe singular high water magic attack with a high uh sorry high unguard rate self magic and dex plus 50 percent so she's got magic now plus 50 percent water plus 100 percent if you have the uh og har he may you can now have water and magic 100 percent on her and then foes singular super water magic attack with temporary magic boost and critical rate self critical rate and penetration rate 50 percent now when she gets to do her sa ultra water magic attack plus 70% per each self strength, I'm sorry, per each self water damage and magic buff. So for every magic buff and every water buff on herself, she's gonna get another 70%. Start doing the math on that. Assists also count in that. So she gets 70% for every magic buff, 70% for every water buff. Are you seeing where I'm going? That is absolutely killer. That is a 280% boost if you have her buffed right just on on her SA. And that's on top of an ultra water attack. And uh, I believe the max on her assists would be 15 to 20%. And the max on her every one of her other stats would be 100%. She is going to kill everything. She's a really stellar unit, but why is she A-class? Well, honest to goodness, the reason she's A-class is because she does not out-damage Otaro. I don't think she can quite out-damage Otaro. She's really good, but in my experience, I found Otaro's a uh, little bit more. Otaro has better debuffs. Otaro's going to be useful in more things, and I feel like Otaro's going to be mandatory for any single target event upcoming. Uh, plus, single target units are very conditional. Uh, it's not like they're going to work, for the most part, in every single record buster, every single single target 7th zone. They're very, very, very conditional. Now, she does kind of adapt to that by having the 100% SA gauge charge, so you could use her in SA rush teams. But, 
Uh, not in war game, obviously, in like Record Buster or in Seven Zone or something like that. So you could use her for SA rushing, which even SA rushing kind of has its ups and downs. So uh, Otaro, on the other hand, is just going to be so good on so many teams. That said, I don't think he needs to be maximum broken for a lot of that. But even if he's off type, he still is going to hit, I believe, in my heart of hearts, a lot harder than uh, uh, Riv. And the reason I say that is because Riv, simply put, isn't going to have the right level of buffing if she's off an off type team. Follow me? Hopefully it makes sense. Let's talk about the B class. Because, unfortunately, these two units I had a lot of hope for. And I really feel like they fell off the map. Uh, I'm going to talk about... Uh, I'm going to talk about Eyes just because she's right here already. Uh, she's just above Riv. Okay. Eyes is a very good single target unit. But once again, like we talked about before, if she's not on type, she's going to fall off the map again. Now, she does do a single target plus 25%, but there's a lot of units that do that. She does debuff win 50% with her SA, but mm, it's only so good. And there's only so many situations you're going to really use that in. Um, you're gonna it's that's kind of like a when you do debuffing with your SA, you're kind of doing a Hail Mary pass. You're really hoping that that's gonna produce a ton of damage after the fact. But honestly, it's probably not your best tactic. Um, super and physical attack with or, so, I'm sorry. Skill one is a self fast strength, dex, and wind attack damage and counter rate plus forty percent. Notice there's no damage on that turn. Skill two is a super wind. Physical attack with temporary strength boost and status buff minus uh, minus two turns. That's actually a really good skill. Uh, but then skill three is a high wind physical attack with high critical rate. Self three actions, low wind physical attack, and uh, a foe with high penetration rate. So she does get high penetration rate on her extra attack, but she does kind of fall off the map a little bit by not having extra damage on the first turn and things like that. And her SA is extremely conditional and frankly not really all that special. Um, it'd be really good for, like, if you're, there are some situations in Record Buster where if it's wind typed and uh, you the debuffs will stay in play for the whole game, there's some tactic to getting that SA off early, but it is so absolutely conditional, I just can't justify putting bonds in her if unless literally everybody above her literally everybody above her has bonds uh now magic elise magic elise is an interesting one i think we had high hopes for her and i think she kind of fell on her face a little bit skill one foes fast damage received attack type all targets plus 30 percent a very good buff in that regard but that's more of like a sack skill, you know? Like, you basically do that and then rotate her out. Um, plus, she gets three extra actions, low fire magic attack. Foes, plural, for skill two. High fire magic attack with temporary magic boost. Ultra critical rate and self magic and fire attack damage plus 70% for three turns. So she gets good damage there. But here's the problem. You almost have to do skill two and then skill one. And skill one... You really need that debuff off early. So she's kind of like, I won't say a glass cannon, but she's like a monkey paw effect. She has great, great skills, but you got to use them in the right order. And by the time you've used them, you're probably, you know, later game than you'd like to be. So I really feel like she's good ideas just implemented poorly and she doesn't have a super class attack and so that's once again why i say be clear but if you want to compare her to last year's units she'll thrash the last year's units she'll laugh at them and destroy them and just dominate them but to be fair we're comparing m most recent units and the power creep has been real over the past year gareth i put gareth down there because gareth disappointed me greatly he kept dropping. He would not leave me alone. Uh, and I really feel like for my max limit break, I didn't see a whole lot out of him. Uh, his first skill was once again the same problem I kind of have with some of these other units. It's an allies. Fast earth attack damage plus 50%, which is really good. Really good for an all allies skill. One of the best, in fact. But most every other earth unit already has a self buff. It's not that good. Self, three actions, 75% null physical attack. So, he will nullify one physical attack. 
every time they come in, or basically every turn after he does an attack. He, one, he has to get off his attack first to apply that nullification. So let's say, turn one, he comes in, does that big buff. Turn two is going to be a foes, plural, super earth physical attack with temporary strength boost, ultra on guard rate, and allies remove strength and magic debuffs. Now, once again, remove strength and magic debuffs is a very, very rare skill. Very useful skill. Not one you often find a, a place for on a team. I've tried, it just doesn't fit. Notice that's also not a fast skill. So he's going to come out of the gate with that. His agility, let's grab his agility stat here. His agility stat is extremely good. But we've got units now that are well over a thousand uh, before you put any CP into him. So it's not like he's going to have attack first in most situations. Which means he's going to attack middle of the pack. Which means that nullified physical attack is basically only effective for turn three. It is... He needs a fast skill on that. He needed a fast skill and he needs more agility. Um, I think he falls apart because he really was... He was perceived at the beginning of all this. And I don't think they really either had any intent for him to be useful. I mean, Gareth just doesn't get any love in this game, honestly. Um, every like, And the best thing we got was Gallimus last year, who was a really awesome sack unit. But Gareth just doesn't really get a lot of love in this game. But I think if he had a fast skill on his second, or fast attack on his second skill, he would easily be a B. But I just feel like they nerfed him. So that's all of the units here. Now, we can go ahead and we can apply the other units that we've received. Boom. Um, up here. And that does mean Light Bell is an S unit. The Light Bell that came just a little bit ago. So is his Hestia assist. And Althea is up there as well. So you can't use Jade Lights in them. But if you have Prism Bonds, I would recommend Maxima Breaking Bell. In fact, after looking at this last night, my Bell is plus one. I am going to be uh, throwing Prism Bonds on him like crazy today. I'm definitely going to get my bell up, maxima broken, and maybe even do some testing with him tonight on stream. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, the Hestia assist is absolutely stellar. Once again, another, not quite a must limit break. She's borderline on the must limit break. Um, there was an argument last night for probably a good 30, 45 minutes as to whether she needed it. She's a strength of magic down 20%, which I think is the highest uh, assist debuff in the game. Allies counter rate 10%. So, very, very, very good. The only reason, the one and only reason I put her in S over must ma Maxima Break is because she is not time limited. She does not have a Heroic Trial. She does not have any free bonds. You've got to throw Prism Bonds on her, which arguably are a little more hard to come by at this juncture of the game. Um, so, I put her in S instead of must Maxima Break. Because I really feel like, A, she's in the general pool. She'll be attainable after this event. Um, she, she could drop on any two or three star ticket. So I, uh, as really good as she is, I don't think she's one that you have to sit here and pay close, very, close attention to and maximum break right before the event ends. In that regard, I think Bell's exactly the same way. He's not time limited. He's going to be everywhere. You can maximum break him and pull him 100 times over just on tickets. So... Maybe burn all of your three-star tickets that you got from the gotchas before you put any bond in there, because maybe you'll pull more of him. Althea. Althea is such a really stellar unit. I have absolutely been enjoying her. Um, honestly, though, if I'm completely real, as much as Erebus is an A-class, if you're doing the Heroic Trial, which we haven't done the EX for, we're going to do that tomorrow, if you haven't done the Heroic Trial yet, Get the Erebus bond before you do the Althea bond, unless Althea, or unless Erebus is maxed on my broken. That is my only exception. The reason I say that is because Erebus, once again, is an assist. His star bond is going to be absolutely more expensive than Althea's star bond. Althea's star bond is going to be a thousand gnome tickets. His is fifteen hundred. So if you have to choose between the two of them, that's the only caveat I would say. Is I would choose Erebus over Althea. But Althea is going to have way more uses than Erebus ever will. Erebus really requires you build 
a light team, a light exclusive team. Erebus is very, very good for light. Kind of rubbish for everything else. He's got one of the best type debuffs in the game at 20%, but if you're not running a light team, he's pointless. So that's the only reason is he's an A-class. Other than that, all of his stats put him in the S tier. But Althea, on the other hand, Althea is an absolutely stellar, stellar, stellar unit. Let's go ahead and pull her up here. Uh, so at max ascent, she has 1,200 agility. She's going first. She she wins the race each and every time. Uh, I think she's got the highest agility stat in the game. End of discussion. Uh, magic is 2020. I believe that's the highest magic stat in the game at this point. She's ridiculous. Her first skill is a self. Magic and agility plus 70%. Now, normally I get upset when these skills do not have a an attack here. But she, with her agility, she doesn't need a turn two. She's going to come out of the gate with a huge, crazy magic damage uh, and just wreck everything. Plus, this gives three extra actions, 75% null magic attack, which with with as important as magic is right now in war games, she is unbelievable for a war game. She's keeping me alive in a lot of situations. Her second skill is a fast Mid-light magic attack with temporary magic boost, allies light attack damage plus 35%, foes light resist minus 40%. I will tell you, even though that's a mid attack, it hits like a super class attack with all the buffing she gives herself. She is absolutely ridiculous, and I think game-changing. Um, she's just great. She's great. Even her third skill, high light magic attack damage plus 40% per each self magic buff skill with with a high penetration rate she'll even be good for single target events she hits really really well like on the level of any regular single target unit with the right uh, uh skills she is so good zard and he's the last unit we're going to kind of talk about here i kind of feel like i i'm a little disappointed in zard if i'm honest here so zard had a really awesome strength buff or strength skill, uh, yeah, th strength skill at almost 2100 before any CP 2098. Very good, high HP. His MP is a little low, but that's fine. Um, super light physical attack with 30% taunt. Here's the deal with this 30% taunt isn't a very good taunt skill, it could be, but it just isn't. And he's slow. His agility, all of his stats went into decks. His agility is almost abysmal for this level of the gameplay. At max ascend, it's 782. And we talked about why Gareth kind of falls apart in that regard. In order for Zard to be good, he needs more agility. If you could buff his agility insanely, he would be stellar. Stellar. That said, his his SA is a physical resist and magic resist down 50%. Not unheard of, but good for 7th zone. That's about it. Skill 2 is a high light physical attack with temporary strength boost, penetration rate, or I'm sorry, and high penetration rate, self strength and dex plus 70%. Basically, he's a counter and crit machine. But... If I'm honest here, what this guy should do is he should have every every skill should be fast if he wants to be useful. The problem is before he can get an attack off in war game or anything like that, he's basically halted. He's based the dude's built for war game with the exception that he has dex instead of agility. If he reversed his agility and dex stats, he would be perfect for war game. That's basically what Althea is. Instead, what he does is he just kind of stops, and he sits there, and he waits for things to happen. And if he survives, then he goes, cool, now I'm going to kill you. But you're taking a lot of damage while you're waiting for him to do something. So that's why I think he's so low tier, personally. Uh, let me know what you guys think. I've worked long and hard on this. Like I said, I want to, want to once again give a shout-out to everyone on the Discord uh, for, well, the two or three guys. But everyone that came in and helped us out, uh, we got a lot of feedback on this. It was very, very, very good. Um, and I appreciate everyone's assistance. 
I put a lot of time and effort into making this tier list, so I'd really like to know your feedback. I know it's an extremely long video, but for now, that is going to be the video. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section down below, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Uh, also, subscribe and hit the notification bell. That that helps, too. Kind of like, like seeing those numbers.